it's Ukraine, not the Ukraine. Kind of like Ohio State University. Boom, take that Ohio State. Ukraine is at the center of the 2020 presidential race right now. Yes, Ukraine, which is, yes, super weird. It's also very, very confusing. And the fact that there are two separate but intersecting storylines, one about Donald Trump in Ukraine, the other about Joe Biden and his son Hunter and Ukraine, each of which has their own charges, counter charges, and counter to the counter charges make it all the more confusing. Now you put a big dollop of politics on top of it all, and it's very hard to figure out, A, what the hell is actually going on? And B, who is telling the truth and who, well, isn't. And that's where I come in. So let's go through both storylines and unpack them. And we'll start with Trump because, well, he's the president. What no one disputes is that at the end of July, Trump had a phone call with newly elected Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. And on that phone call, Trump raised the issue of corruption in Ukraine and specifically in relation to Joe Biden and his son, Hunter, said Trump of the phone call, quote, The conversation I had was largely congratulatory, was largely corruption, all of the corruption taking place was largely the fact that we don't want our people, like Vice President Biden and his son, creating to the, the corruption already in the Ukraine. In Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's got a lot of problems. Which gets us to the Biden end of all this. Again, let's start with what we know as proven facts. Hunter Biden is the son of the then Vice President, and he was on the board of a Ukrainian natural gas company called Burisma Holdings. Now, Hunter Biden had been on the board from the spring of 2014, and he left the board in the spring of 2019. Now, that company was, at some point, being investigated by Ukraine's top prosecutor, a guy named Viktor Shokin. In 2016, Joe Biden traveled to Ukraine, where he made it clear that the U.S. would withhold $1 billion in loan guarantees to the country unless it removed Shokin from the job part of a broader international effort to push out Shokin, who was seen as ignoring rampant corruption in Ukraine. Independent fact checkers have confirmed that the probe into Burzma Holdings had already been put aside before Biden traveled to Ukraine to push for Shokin's ouster. Quote, not one single credible outlet has given any credibility to his assertion. Biden said in Iowa in mid-September about Trump's claim that there was some sort of nefarious activity that's going to come to light on the Biden's dealings in Ukraine. Quote, not one single one. And so I have no comment except the president should start to be the president, end quote. Which brings us back around to the president of, of the United States, not, not Ukraine, less important. So Trump has said that the call between he and Zelensky was a quote, great conversation, end quote, and a quote, perfect phone call, end quote, which means, well, absolutely nothing when it comes to the facts of the matter. Now, important sidebar, I once actually executed a perfect phone call. It was in the summer of 1993. It was just flawless. I hit all my points, no verbal stumbles. I got out of the call really well. Really perfect. All the judges said so. And sidebar. What we know now is that in early August, a whistleblower in the intelligence community filed a complaint regarding communications between Trump and a foreign leader. And that the intelligence community inspector general referred the matter to the director of national intelligence and called in an issue of, quote, urgent concern, end quote. Now, the director of national intelligence has not sent the whistleblower complaint to the House and Senate Intelligence Committees, though, because of one interpretation of the law that says since the complaint deals with the executive branch, Donald Trump, not the intelligence community, it is therefore out of his jurisdiction. Where did he get this advice? <laughs> the Trump White House and the Justice Department, of course. I'm sure that's all above board. Uh, now, the key to all of this, or at least a lot of it, is what exactly happened on that July phone call. And this is where much still remains unknown. The Washington Post has reported that the call involved a promise, their words, that so troubled the whistleblower that he filed a formal complaint. The Wall Street Journal has reported that on eight, eight occasions during the call, Trump urged Zelensky to work with his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, you may remember him from such hits as mayor of New York City, and to investigate Hunter and Joe Biden. Now, Trump has avoided talking specifics about the call, aside from it, of course, being perfect, but his White House has indicated that there is an internal debate about whether to release the transcript of the Zelensky-Trump call publicly. Even as that debate raged, Trump seems to be moving closer and closer to admitting 
that he actually did what the reporting of the call suggests he did. This is my surprise face. It's very important to talk about corruption. If you don't talk about corruption, why would you give money to a country that you think is, is corrupt? But it's very important that on occasion you speak to somebody about corruption. <sighs> now, facts first again here. There's no evidence, no evidence currently that Joe or Hunter Biden did something untoward, great word, in Ukraine. And Donald Trump has already acknowledged that he raised the issue of potential corruption on the part of the Bidens with the president of Ukraine on a phone call, which at best is hugely inappropriate for a president to do. And at worst is something much darker and more problematic for Trump's presidency. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.